graduation rates are not a, while well, we did it during their 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade year, it's really a K-12 or a pre-K-12 celebration of bringing our students along successful every single year. And uh, it's a celebration for our staff and our students, parents and community. Uh, the state of Colorado has gone through a series of adjustments with their definition for graduation rate. Up until 2005 and 6, all districts in the state of Colorado, let alone states throughout the nation, all did graduation rates at their own method. Uh, there was no consistency, there was no way to compare data. Starting in 2005 and 6, the state of Colorado uh, became very consistent with a definition of graduation rate including those students that started in the ninth grade year, four years later graduated, or it could have been a fifth or sixth year, they just rolled those students into a different year. But technically in 2005 and six, they started calculating all students that started in our system and finished in our system. Those students that did not stay in our system and went away before um, were not necessarily tracked starting in 2005 and 6, a new definition called adequate documentation came into place, which caused us to say any student that left our system, we had to account for them by showing that they re-enrolled in another public or private school and that there was a request for uh, records and so on. This became very uh, cumbersome for us, but yet very important. To put it in perspective, we, we now are just completing, after 2009 and 10, we're, we're getting our first set of data where we compare our four-year, five-year, and six-year rates. So as an example, the class of 2010-11 graduated 75.5% of those seniors in a four-year rate, what we call it on time. Just one year later, for that class of 2010-11, another 4% of those students graduated that were still enrolled. So our graduation rate went up to 79.5. Still, that's the class of 2010-11. They just graduated a year later. And finally, in 2010-11, with the six-year graduation rate, we were up to 80.2% of our students. So uh, roughly another percent of our students. So over time, uh, roughly 4% of our students graduated in that fifth year and another 1% graduated in that sixth year. I would guess that we still have another 2% that are still enrolled and that we will pick up probably a half percent of those students as a seven-year graduation rate. Our current dropout data continues to go down as we look at it over the last seven years since we redefined dropout data in 2005 and 6. At that point, we were at 4.8% dropout rate. We are now at a 2.8% dropout rate. So that may not seem significant, but again, let's put some numbers behind those percents. Uh, a drop of 4.8 to 2.8 is a reduction of 2% of dropouts. Now remember dropout is a yearly rate that covers grades 7 through 12 with 9,000 students. So every percent represents 90 students. So a 2% reduction in our dropout rate represents saving another 180 students last year that in 2005 and 6 would have dropped out. So students that used to stay in our system past their fourth year would simply roll into the next year's graduate prior to 910. But starting in, in 2009 and 10, we also created additional rates called still enrolled rates, where we wanted to keep track of those students that were in our system, but were what we'd call super seniors and might graduate in five, six, or even seven years. So from that point on over the last four years, as as important as it is to celebrate an on-time four-year graduation rate, more importantly is that we account for all students that are in our system and that we keep track of those students all the way to their diploma. The difference between a dropout rate and a graduation rate is the dropout rate is a yearly rate. It rolls over every year with a new group of students. Any students that's in grades 7 through 12 count into our dropout rate. A common misconception is that the graduation and dropout rate should add up to 100%. But it's after those two definitions, one can see that the graduation rate is measuring one cohort or one group of students, so roughly 1,500 students, that progress over their four-year, five-year, six-year, seven-year journey. The dropout rate measures just all 9,000 students in that year. So for that reason, the graduation rate plus the dropout rate does not add up to 100%. Uh, we do progress monitor our students. We have progress monitors in all the high schools. They're like counselors that uh, 
continue to monitor those students that might be at risk. Uh, we have additional pathways, academic options. We have uh, student learning centers where students can do credit recovery. So if they lose credit in a class, that they can come back and repeat that class. Sometimes doing the same thing over and over, uh, expecting different results is our famous definition of insanity. And so we do need to look at how do we come back and help those students with a different pathway. Once a student drops out, doesn't mean that they're a dropout for the rest of their career. We constantly recruit and bring students back that have dropped out to say what, what wasn't working for you, what academic pathway might fit better. So we do have a lot of academic options that allow students to be successful where a traditional comprehensive four-year high school wasn't working for them.